My name is Ari Moore, and I've known LJ since my very first solo of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And he's in high school one year when my mom sent me to school with my big sister Pamela to uh, so mom could go Christmas shopping. So the first time I met her when I was three, in a lot of ways, the first gentleman that spoke nailed it. LJ raised me in a lot of ways. I never got to know her family. I knew Alton in high school because he was a senior and I was a freshman. I was a lowly freshman, so, you know, he was a senior football player and everything. But LJ has been incredibly significant in my life. Um, literally, when I say she's my sister, I kid you not, that woman treated me like my sister. That woman supported Women in music, beyond <laughs> And she embraced women. She was a tough cookie. One, one, one night, not too long ago, Terry was there. She told me that somebody had told her that she got all diva-ish. And she said, I would never do that. <laughs> person I know, and baby sister, if you ever see me go diva-ish, you just let me know, because I know you'll tell me. And I looked at her and I said, really, LJ? She said, yes. And I said, okay, 15 minutes ago? <laughs> I, I, I do have one story, and, 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 and uh, if my choir director's here from high school, he'll be very upset with her right now. In high school, I had, she was a chaperone for our jazz tour, and I've known her since I was three. So I sat with her on the bus, and I had a solo on a song called Girl Talk. And my voice sounded like this, I had nothing. And I'm sitting with her on the bus, it's a weekend trip, we're going to Mountain Hook Jazz Festival contest. And she looks at me, because I miss my sister, I'm sitting with her on the bus, and she looks at me and she says, girl, I'm gonna hook you up. <laughs> I'm 14, I don't know what hooking me up is. <laughs> so the next day, 10 minutes before I go on stage, she drags me in the back of Mount Hood Community College and gives me a thick, liquid, amber-colored ale. <laughs> now, I was a good girl. I, I was a very good girl, and I, so I have no idea what this is. And she said, pound. And I looked at her, and I, what, what does that mean? She said, swallow it whole. So I did. And little men jumped in my throat and started chiseling at my vocal cords. And it hurt, and I had tears streaming down my face, and I could have killed her. And then she poured me another one and said, do it again. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, no. <laughs> she said, and I go, okay. So I did it again. And then 10 minutes later, I went on stage. And I said, well, like an angel, you'd never know I wouldn't be able to sing. That liquid liqueur, which I really still can't stand to this day, was Grand Morgan. <laughs> and to this day, any time my voice is tired or sore or fried, I get a shot, Grand Morgan. <laughs> LJ was family. Dixie, she loved you. Oh, and I got a lot of emails from her saying, please go visit my mother's restaurant because you live close enough. You were lucky to have her in your life, and we were lucky that you shared her with us. Thank you.